This is Marlene Arnoldi coming to you from Johannesburg for Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly magazine. Today I'm speaking to AgBiz Chief Economist Wandile Sislobo about the impact that load shedding is having on agriculture and particularly agricultural logistics. Can you please unpack how load shedding is impacting on South African agriculture's logistics and particularly the coal chain? The current difficulties of load shedding are over the past two weeks uh, specifically have had severe impact on South Africa's agriculture and of course the food, fiber and beverages value chain. I think the better way to understand it is first if we consider the primary agricultural side and you think about the farmers that are uh, practicing under irrigation. For example, in maize, about 18% or so of it is produced under irrigation uh, if you think about soybeans, 15% under irrigation uh, on wheat when it's in season, it's off season right now because it's a winter crop, but when it's on season, about uh, half of it is produced under irrigation. And you think about sugar, about a third of it is also produced on irrigation. So a sizable area on fruits, vegetables that is under irrigation. So if you look about on that just alone, horticulture and the grains, there's already uh, quite a good exposure and a need for consistent electricity supply on that. From what we have seen so far from farmers in various regions of South Africa is that the impact is quite severe on, on those and we see wilting crops in the other areas. But as better to say how much the size of the tonnage of what is uh, has already been damaged so far. The estimates from that um, are, are not quite solid at this point. We're still pretty much assessing the scale of the, of the damage onto that. The slightly positive part for people that are not under irrigation is that we're coming from a season which has had excessive rains and that has helped to improve soil moisture. Now, if you move away from that and you consider those that are farming in the livestock, uh, poultry, and the other businesses still in the primary agriculture side. There, the impact is quite severe also in the dairy industry, which you cannot really operate a dairy business without a consistent supply of electricity. And in the poultry sector, uh, the numbers are also just as large and they are changing day by day uh, as many people continue to experience um, the, 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 the load shedding impact. And the same is true for the entire uh, livestock uh, value chain. Now, the agribusinesses, which are those that are in the value chain of agriculture, the impact there, I mean, we're currently running a survey now with the hopes to actually have some figures that we can place there, but all of the anecdotal evidence uh, points to some pressures. Ideally, if we could have um, load sh shading in these unfortunate circumstances, not going beyond stage two, then some businesses could be able to operate and plug in where there are shortages with their power backups. But the minute you go beyond stage two, that's where also the difficult starts. Those that are in irrigation, the hope is that they can have a much more planned load shading schedule because farmers usually pump water in the afternoon and then they irrigate in the evenings. So it's those certain type of intervention that needs to be looked at as we grapple with the shortage and I'm looking at saying, how do they bridge out this shortage? So all in all, there are no solid numbers that we can place to this uh, right now, the survey running and the anecdotal evidence is that the areas with largest exposure are already feeling uh, the, the impact. That's what we're seeing in a primary as well as in the agro processing space. And logistics business then is interlinked uh, with, with these because they move the produce that comes out of agriculture. So if there's low activity, you expect low activity also within the logistics business. What are farmers doing to mitigate against the impact of load shedding on their yield and their sales, both at a farm level and from a logistics point of view? Right now, everyone is sort of uh, uh, taken by storm about the effects of load shedding. As I've just mentioned, uh, the area that is under irrigation. So. The, the path forward in the near term is to have conversation with, between the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, um, ESCOM Management, and organized agriculture groupings to say, in the near term, what are some of the interventions that we can put in place? And then for, for the long term, what interventions can be put in place? For example, these will be both financial as well as regulatory. On a regulatory side, for example, we have to say, are there any acts that limits farmers, such as the Subdivision Act, 
to put their the, the energy facilities uh, for renewables in there. Uh, and all of those needs to be streamlined because some farmers have said, look, when we want to use certain pieces of land to do own generation, there are limitations. So the department has to prioritize and streamline that. And the second part is that uh, we have to be looking for money to say, how do we subsidize uh, own generation amongst farmers as well as their agribusinesses? Because it is quite clear, at least from where I'm sitting, that the energy crisis is gonna be with us for some time. So where resources permit, we have to be promoting own generation. And that's what the farmers are also considering at this point. The other intervention of course is to say, can ESCOM assist in making sure that the load shedding schedule for irrigation is minimized and in a planned way so that at least we are able to proceed with these uh, products because food security is in part dependent um, on these crops. So those are the discussions that I think in the near term are useful. And of course, the long term is to say, how do we continue promoting own generation? And that will form a strategy, making sure that we are greening the sector. And I think then this crisis is leading us to that path of greening the South African agricultural sector. But we need financial subsidies for some of the farmers that will be putting these facilities in, in place. And that's a discussion to, to have with the government. That was Wandile Sislobo, the chief economist for Agbis, talking about the impact that load shedding is having on agriculture and particularly agricultural logistics.